Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Friday morning trading session. Hold on here just a moment while I get you my monitor. Okay, so uh, the markets just opened up and, well, here, let's take a look at where they've been going through the overnight. We'll take a look here on the Eagle. And you can see that the overnight session, a little bit on the choppy part, at least for the last hour, quite active, but very, very choppy. And even, where was the London Open? The London Open right about here. So the market very whippy. And we kind of anticipated that, given that we've had two very strong trending days. It used to be that the market could trend for about a week straight, but not anymore. Now if you get one or two very strong trending days, you can probably anticipate that the market's going to get a little bit on the choppy side. So Trade Forecaster says we've got trend mode for about another five minutes. So it looks like here this was the trend that Trade Forecaster was mostly interested in. And now, well, they're not honoring that trend line very well, are they? Now we're probably going to see a lot of back and forth type trading going on. Unless they really commit to the uh, short side, which they well might. But we'll give them a moment here for the dust to settle. It's a pretty strong move out of the open. For Friday, So we'll give them a minute here. The opening bell is always tough to trade. Sometimes you can get some very pronounced moves, but it can be a little bit difficult. Wow, this is going to be a huge opening uh, for the market. No real retest or any, anything of the sort. Just boom, straight down. Getting pretty close to yesterday's lows. Well, it's kind of close. So yesterday the market bottomed out at, where was it, around 41.12? All right, well, we're just going to put that on the shelf here for a moment. I'm not going to uh, chase it. And hold on a second here. Oh, you scoundrels.
All right, a little bit of a macro pullback coming here. In the hawk. Oh, they're just kind of bouncing around a little bit here. Let's see what we've got. Just waiting for a little bit of structure here, and I'm going to be left waiting here if I don't uh, get on this, get a chance to get on this train. Gold is pretty much flat today. Crude oil, uh, well, they've trickled off somewhat. Let's take a look at crude oil here on the Eagle, I suppose, is giving us the best look at it. So crude oil opened right about here, but you can see the overnight was fairly steady to the downside, making a rather nice little trading channel something to this effect anyway uh, we'll put that away for now All right, so after that early decline, we're getting a little bit more structure in the trade. Uh, this is going to be a tough one. All right, well, we're getting a bit of a green bar sell here. And what do we always anticipate from the green bar sell but that the market's going to continue with the trend, which at the moment seems to be down, and our green bar sell just disappeared. So that means we're probably working on a uh, trend change signal here on the Falcon and it looks as though we're going to see a move into the hard edge as the buyers have finally shown up Okay, so the Raptor moving up here into the hard edge now, and I'm going to shoot a trend line across the tops here. Trend lines can be pretty helpful little tools for gauging the market. So it looks like we almost have this type of thing going on. In fact, what I'll do is I'm going to pull this trend line down here, put another one across the top, it's 
So this is where we're at now. We have this little bit of a trading channel going on. All right, getting a sell signal here on the Raptor. Oops, come on. I was just going to point this out. We're going to look for a double pullback. It is a hard edge bounce. Or you could try to take this one on a second push. Let's see if I'm getting a signal here on the Falcon 2. No, and the Hawk is all out of sync also. All right, so the Raptor right now is the only one that's kind of given us a an early opportunity to get into this trade you may want to take it below the current low you know just to look for that little extra push So we're getting a little bit of width on this bar now as they're the fight between the buyers and the sellers. We know there's obviously some buying activity going on here. And now the buyers are really tipping their hand because we can see them buying in off of this, off of the lows. This is why I postponed the signal a little bit as well. There is enough room in here that you could probably get out with a scalping target and perhaps even get the trade close to a break even, maybe roll it in above these highs. You can see we're generating another warning dot. We're going to generate another sell signal here on this bar. Oh, actually, it uh, it tripped a little bit late, but whatever the case, it looks as though uh, the market is moving in our favor, and I'm going to go with the parabolics, just because I think it's going to be that kind of a day. All right, first profit target, the rest of the trade to break even. Now we're playing on their dime. No! <laughs> Don't back up! Oh, darn! It had such a good start to it. I thought for sure they were going to just continue off. Oh well, wishful thinking. It was still a decent trade. Um, let's see, oh, we got a nice first micro-macro cross signal here on the Hawk. Uh, the just the basic with trend signal here on the eagle that one's probably still working but very close to its profit objective and it looks like we're going to hit our profit target there now oh or very very close yeah, see this is the deal with uh when you delay your entry versus taking it on the hash mark. Sometimes you put the probabilities in your favor, but the profit targets are always based on the hash mark. So here you can see you hit the profit target, the market starts to reverse. If we had used the ATR as our filter, this bar here becomes our signal bar, and I think we're still working it. Yeah, look at that, the market came up one tick short but honestly, when I would have seen this green bar, I probably would have got my stops down there. So I would probably be out with some sort of profit right now. Whenever you're in a trend or in a profitable move, if you get one bar against your position, you're very likely going to see two. So that's why I usually start to bring my stops in a little bit tighter. If the trend continues in your favor, great. But otherwise, you're probably going to see a little bit of a retracement.
Oh, good morning, Jim. Jim uh, shooting some advanced decline numbers here. It's looking a little bit bearish on the day. 750 on the buy, 1900 on the sell. So the market's got a little bit of a bearish tone. So far, that seems to be the case. Mo is asking a question here. Eric, on the hawk, I noticed that on the long sell, the bar stayed below the micro line. Could you take a long as the bars cross over the micro line even before the micro line crosses the macro, or is this not a good idea? All right, so on the long sell. So I think you're referring to the green bar sell. And correct me if that's not the case. Okay, so here's a green bar sell. This green bar sell failed. It turned the sell dot disappeared. So we'll look at this one right here. So Mo asks, on the green bar sell, I noticed that the bars stayed below the micro line. Uh, hmm. No. Okay, we must be looking at. I must be looking at something different. But Mo's asking, anyways, Mo's asking, could you take a long as the bars cross over the micro line? And I think what you're meaning is the macro line, even before the micro line crosses the macro line, or is this not a good idea? Um, okay, so I think what Mo is after is, you know, can we take a signal? when the bars start to breach the macro line. You know, Mo, I would say no, only because, you know, we're not looking for more signals. We're looking for high probability signals. And hold on just one second here. Many of you are going to have seen this already, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. And Mo, if you don't have this already, please feel free to write me for it. So this is our uh, cheat sheet, if you will, for the hawk. And these are the, the five high probability signals that we tend to focus on. Now notice that there's other signals in here as well that I don't mention. And many of these signals worked out to find their profit objective. But for the most part, these signals have the, the greatest probability of success. Now, if you're looking at the hawk and you're finding a consistent um, pattern, then by all means, uh, trade it. Um, I remember, I think it was Scott or one of our members, he was working on a yellow bar pattern. And then he, he forget exactly how it developed, but he was watching something and it, it did have a pretty good success rate. Because, you know, normally I tell you, avoid the yellow bars. But simply to, to buy or sell because price gets above the macro line, I don't think that's... Well, you're probably going to get your profit objective. So let's say you bought there, you risk down here. You know, we've got a very tight profit target. Oops, although that one we didn't reach it, did we? I guess at the end of the day, I would say no, because we're just looking for high probability opportunities. That's what I'm focusing on is I want a high probability trade. But really, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's your money. <laughs> you know, if, oh, I see here. Okay, Mo saying, when the micro line starts to turn green. When the micro line starts to turn green, Mo says, can we start to buy? 
I would say no, because what inevitably that's going to be a counter trend trade, and it's going to block you from taking the with trend trade. So Mo would say, okay, here, you know, the micro line turned red. Can we sell it? You know, here the micro line turned green. Should we buy it? I would, you know, when you get the, the big swing like this, well, then, of course, it's going to be profitable. But when you get the minor swing like this, it's not going to work. If you're really keen on it, if it's something that's striking your eye, what I would suggest you do is you grab your scroller and you go right back to the very beginning of your chart and you start plotting how well that worked. You know, maybe it does give you enough profit that you can scalp in and out when it does that type of thing. But uh, right now, I only have the the stats on the um, on the signals themselves. And when we were developing the the tools, we were checking every single signal to say, okay, you know. Why does this signal work out better than this signal here? And we recognized a few commonalities between the signals. That's not to say that we got them all. Um, so if if you come across something, you know that's great. I would I would love to know about it. Uh, Michael is asking, Eric, do you have cheat sheets for the Falcon or the Eagle? Uh, I got a cheat sheet done for the Falcon. Uh, one sec, I will show that to you. So here's the Falcon cheat sheet. I haven't done one for the Eagle yet. Uh, only because we go over the signals every day in the trading room. And if you're ever confused about the signals, please ask. But here are your basic Falcon signals. First, we have the trend change signal. So the trend line changes from green to red. The market has this down, up, down progression. We come back with a signal. Everything is in sync. We have the late filter entry signal, which is a high probability signal, where the filter goes out of sync and comes back into sync, but the trend line never changes color. That's a high probability signal. And then we just have your basic trend line touch where the Falcon trades into the trend line and produces a signal, but everything remains in sync. The Eagle, I haven't done one yet because I, it takes a long time to actually find a, uh, a segment of trading that you can show everything on one chart. Not so much with the Hawk, but certainly for the Falcon and the Eagle. Now the Eagle signals, oh, and I'm sorry, I see a couple more uh, questions here. I'll just go over the Eagle signals very quickly. Uh, we have what we call the rule of three signal. This was only a rule of two this morning. Oh, no, it was three. One, two, three. I didn't notice the signal here. The rule of three signal, which uh, produces three counter trend signals against the trend. So if you can't see them, there's one, there's two, there's three. We also have our basic trend change signal, which is right there. And then we have our green bar sell in a downtrend or the red bar buy in the uptrend. And unlike those in the Hawk, uh, these are high probability signals. Now, they're not high probability signals when you don't have a trend. You see we have several green bar sells and red bar buys here and they didn't go anywhere. It's because there's no trend. But when we have a trending market, oh, come on. Sorry if I'm making you nauseous. There we go. If we have a trending market and the market retreats into the hard edge, we will get a reaction. And if it comes out of there as a green bar sell, we can normally anticipate 
a little bit of follow through on the trade. Okay, so those are your basic eagle signals. Okay, so just a moment here. <clears throat> Uh, Marlene is asking, how do you know not to take a first cross on the hawk if the trend is changing? Okay, great question, Marlene. So Marlene is saying, and I'm sure she's probably thinking about this one right here. Why did you not take this first micro macro cross signal? Okay, so let's take a look at it like this. So here comes the first micro macro cross and I'm always telling you, you know, it's a high probability trade. It's uh, accurate over 80% of the time. I almost take it without exception, but what do we have going on here? Well, first you need to take the trade in context. All right. You always need to have the overall context in mind. What is the, the context of this trade. Well, first off, the market opened right here. So the opening bell was, oops, wrong tool. The opening bell was right about here. We're only about five minutes into the session. Oh, actually almost 10 minutes into the session now. But what do we have? We have a a pretty strong downtrend for the most part and not just from this morning but from yesterday as well yes the market was fairly whippy through the rest of the day but for the most part the market is in a pretty strong downtrend so here we come with our first micro macro cross should we take it well it is a first micro macro cross signal we can look at taking it but because it is very early in the day, because we do have a downtrend, we should be very cautious about this first micro macro cross. So you may want to flip into manual mode and maybe just take it on a onesie. You're definitely going to want to risk it deep or as deep as you think you can manage because this is obviously counter trend. The other thing that I will do is if the market has been paying off in one direction, I'll try to stay with that direction. So for instance, even though I missed the signal, here's a first micro macro cross to the downside right here, this guy, that guy right there. And it has paid off to the downside. Right, the market made a very good progression there. Tried to give us a four arrow consolidation here, just was too strong. Tried to give us a macro pullback here, was too strong. And now we've kind of drifted into this little bit of a retracement and we're flashing a buy signal. So it's the buy signal is contrary to the sell signal that has already paid off. At this point, I'm more in favor of the sellers than I am of the buyers. So I try not to flip flop on my trades too much. If the market does have a trend, it will tend to pay off better in one direction than the other. All right, so let's say we did take this trade anyhow. Hey, it's a first micro macro cross. Eric says take all first micro macro crossovers. So there we go, we're in the trade and we're going, oh, and the market turned. All right, so what am I doing now? Well, now I'm gonna be on the alert for a chance to adjust my stops. Why? Because right now I'm thinking, uh-oh, I could be on the wrong side of this trade. At the very least, I would anticipate a pullback to the macro line and then the market perhaps find some support because I also need a test of the extreme, right? Before this market can full on reverse, I need to see a retest of these lows and then the market reverse and head higher. That's how I'll know for sure that we're going to uh, have a, a trend change. Right now, we don't have that retest of the lows, um, so it's a little bit riskier. All right, so here we go. 
heading down, heading down, heading down. I'm looking for any kind of sign of support. Oh, look at this. They're just, okay, there we go. So there's our first sign of support. What I would do is I would now roll my stop below here. I'd be getting a little bit anxious, and I'm hoping and praying that this is now a test of the low, a test of the extreme, and that the market will head higher from here, and which it does not. So I end up getting stopped, but at least I didn't take the full hit. I still probably lost about $150 here, which, you know, hopefully is not enough to really put a dent in, into my account, but that's why this signal was less favorable. You had all these things kind of going against you saying, uh-oh, <laughs> you know, sure, it's an, it's a buy signal. Sure, it's a first micro macro cross, but it's against the dominant trend. It's against the direction that's been paying off. So, therefore, you know, we need to be a little extra cautious. Now, compare that to what we see here. Well, now the market has gone totally sideways. We've got all yellow bars. We're producing first micro-macro cross signals without any follow-through. I think we've just hit the chop zone. I'm getting a few requests here for the cheat sheet for the Falcon. Uh, I would be happy to send those out. I'm going to give you my email address here in the window. And you just shoot me an email and I will be happy to send those to you. Whether you want the Hawk, the Falcon, or both, just let me know. Okay, so here you can see we've on the Raptor, we've drifted out of this nice little declining channel that we've had. And now we're moving sideways. We're getting mildly bullish because we're making higher lows. All right, it looks like now they're challenging the top end here. So all we're doing is we're watching the buyers and the sellers, trying to see who's going to come out ahead. Right now the buyers have the upper hand because the market is... You know, challenging the highs, and do we do we get a buy signal there? No, not yet. And very often, all we need to do is wait and see what they're going to do. I know, patience is hard. It's very hard to wait. But we've had this uh, huge opening range, and now the market kind of recovering a little bit. But it's too early to tell whether this is nothing more than a large bear flag, right? A huge downtrend. Could be a big bear flag and the market just continue lower from here. It's too early to tell. You're just like a, a detective. You're a market detective. You're trying to figure out who is in control of the market. Well, let's see now. If they come down here again and the buyers recover the market one more time, what do you think? I think the buyers will be in control at that point. And then we can look for some sort of buying opportunity. Okay, now I'm just going to check your questions here. 
Uh, yeah, this is a little stale. If, uh, about five minutes ago, Jim posted, uh, buyers are picking up a bit. We got 900 on the buy and 1800 on the sell. Uh, uh, Tony, okay. So we're looking for a buy signal here on the, uh, on the Raptor to see if that holds. And in the meantime, I'm going to fix Tony's chart. Tony says, all my charts have wicks except my Falcon. What's going on? Okay, uh, what's happened, Tony, is your wicks are there, but they're black, and you have a black background. So what you need to do is you need to go here to your data series, and then you go here to your chart style, and you're going to see your candle options. So your candle outline will be black. Your wick will also be black. So what you need to do is you need to click on the color box and choose something other than black. And then when you have that, click apply and OK and voila, Wix. If you want, you can also outline your uh, Falcon bars I found that to be oh actually it doesn't look that bad make some glow But yeah, sometimes when you first load a chart, um, for whatever reason, the Falcon bars print black. It doesn't do it on the other ones, but it does on the Falcon from time to time. And yeah, it can freak you out a little bit. Okay, so now we've got an interesting scenario going on, don't we? So we're back down here testing the lows. The buyers are starting to lose their grip. So this trend line here, no longer effective. And now we're going to see that, hmm, do we have a sideways range going on? So they're testing the bottom end now of this trading range, and we'll see whether or not the sellers are able to maintain or whether the whole market's just going to slip back into a, the trading range. Whenever you get the market overlapping like this, just going sideways, not doing much, it is always, always difficult trading. If you're not sure, do yourself a favor and just stand aside. All right, so we're getting a little bit of a move lower now. It looks like the sellers are still in control, at least for, you know, a little short-term move there. We did get a signal here on the Hawk, as you might expect. So we had a first micro-macro cross here. But it's, it's difficult to see it coming because they're very even bounces in the market here. Yeah, I think we're going to be range bound. I think we're going to be looking at a range that's looking something like so.
All right, well, we'll just put that away for the moment. And I'm just going to double check here, make sure I didn't miss somebody's question. If I did, please repost it. Nope, I think we got them all. All right, here come the buyers. Jim said the buyers are coming in 11 or 1070 on the buy, 1670 on the sell. So it's the, the gap is narrowing. All right, so now we have a first micro macro cross. What do you think? Should we take this one? Is this one more likely to work out than the other one we were looking at? Well, I would say very likely. Why? Well, because the market is an obvious chop. And when a market is in chop, it's going to retest the highs and the lows. So we saw a test of the low here and a failure. So now we're likely to see a test of the high. So if you did take this one, at the very least, you have an opportunity to roll below this bar with this tail. You see this tail right here? That tells me that there was some selling going on and the buyers managed to push the bar higher. So if this high continues to hold, at least I can get stopped out for uh, itty bitty stop. There you go. Instead of a great big stop. And now we're into a macro pullback. And now it looks like, see, they're just doing these little sucker moves where they fail. Oh, we're into yellow bars. Oh, sorry. We're into yellow bars. I was trying to scrub the trade. Uh, what the market is doing right now is they're doing these little, these little fake breakouts. So they're allowing the market to come down. And then they're probably going to push it up here. We're getting another macro pullback signal. Oh, and that one's into yellow bars. So we're very likely to see a, more than a few fake breakouts here. Yeah, uh, and Mo, you're absolutely right. Mo says, you know, on a day like today, you can just get by with taking smaller uh, profit targets. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think you should have a tight profit objective today. All right, so here come the buyers, as expected. Uh, we do have a late filter entry signal here on the Falcon. Now, this is, again, one of these signals that tends to work better within a trend. You need to look at the context of the market. We're getting a buy signal. We have no trend. I know somebody's going to write me today and say, Eric, why did my late filter entry signal not work out? Here it is. It's perfect. Why did it not work out? Well, it didn't work out because you're in a sideways range. People are always asking me, how do I trade a choppy market? You don't. You know, as difficult as this looks to us, do you know what this is telling you? This is telling you that the market is very content. The market is very happy valuating the NASDAQ at around 4,100. 4,100 to 4,115 it looks like. They are very happy with that price range. They, they're thinking this is a very fair price for the NASDAQ right now. And we'll have a similar chart for the Russell and the E-mini and the Dow and every other North American-based stock index. So while this is brutal for us to try to trade, this is what a happy market looks like. When the market is unhappy, this is what it looks like.
We like unhappy markets because they make pronounced moves and they trend. You've probably heard it said that a market will always move from a state of balance to imbalance back to balance. So, well, not much balance here at the top to actually show you, but you can see this for yourself. If you'll go through your charts, you will see very plainly, okay, this is a period, obviously, of balance right now. The market is balanced. Uh, this is looks like a bigger balance. Right? All through the overnight and everything, this was the market's balance point. So it went from there to a period of imbalance back to balance. And it does this over and over again. I'm not going to take the time to show you, but do yourself a favor. Roll back through your chart and you will see for yourself that this is true. When the market is in balance, it is going to be very difficult to trade. I don't care. You've got green bar cells. You've got first micro macro crosses. You've got late filter entry signals. It's a tough gig. You know, it's out of context. See, this first, uh, this late filter entry signal, as textbook as it is, did not go anywhere. So what if you wanted to take this one anyway? Well, don't take it on the hash mark. You can do a second push entry, so you can let the signal engage and say, okay, well, that's the current limit. I'll enter above there. Or you can enter above the last swing high. That kind of forces a little bit more momentum in your favor. Or you can just look at it and say, hey, we've got a sideways market going on here. I ain't touching this with a 10-foot pole. Not until we see a little bit more structure. Yeah, Jim makes a, a good point here. He says, um, the, the DTS system, he says, is a great system, but you still have to know and feel the market, where the buyers and sellers are. Watch the reaction to the areas of interest. And Jim says he really likes the dynamic equivolume bars for pointing that out because the fat bars show you where all the conflict is, where the buyers are, where the sellers are. The thin bars, you know, very little resistance going on there to the buying or selling. But when you see these fat bars come in, yeah, you know, you know there's some buying interest down here at 40.95. You know there's more buying interest here around 4100. You know the sellers are kind of keen around here around 410506. And then back here around 4110. Uh, Tony asks a great question. Uh, Tony says, I know that buying the lows and selling the highs is very presumptive and predictive, but since you can place a trade with a very small stop, does it not make sense to place those kinds of trades? You know, traders do it all the time. And when you've recognized a market is going sideways, uh, it's not a bad strategy. The problem is that very often by the time you recognize the market's going sideways, it's too late. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Okay, we're obviously in a sideways market here on the Eagle. Um, and we're obviously going to make a run here at the highs. But... You know, if we had recognized that the market was sideways at this point, okay, the next time it comes down here to the lows, we'll buy it and maybe cover it below here. We might be in time to actually 
start to profit from it and then we're going to sell it when it gets up here and you know we got a couple opportunities to profit but now we've been in the sideways trend for a while and maybe getting a little long in the tooth maybe and ready to break out but your your point is well taken you know Tony people will always um, they'll also trade trend lines in the same fashion that this is part of the reason trend lines I suppose are effective is because people will go in here with a limit order they'll place a limit to sell on the trend line they'll place their stop a few ticks away you know maybe two ticks so yeah you've got a forty dollar trade going on there and if you happen to time it right fantastic but if you time it wrong you just took a forty dollar hit now forty dollar hit is not the end of the world until you start taking about ten of them and then you've got your commissions and whatnot um, you know, statistically, they say that uh, market ranges about 70% of the time and only trends for about 25% of the time. So here, let's play with this. So the markets, we'll do it here on the, uh, the Hawk because we're going to have a tighter profit objective. So here's our lows, and what we're looking at doing is we're looking at buying the low now. We're going to do a little experimentation because there's no real signal going on. So we're going to buy the low. We're going to risk it uh, two ticks. So 95, we're going to go to 93. There, there's our profit target. So I'm going to place the order. And we're going to look to see whether the market reacts once more to the uh, support area when it comes down here. I think, you know, Tony, I, I might be more interested in doing it if we had a signal with trend. Okay, so in that case, it didn't work. So we just took a little spank. So why don't we shoot a trend line across here? And because it's downtrend, we'll have a limit order to sell when we get up here, or if we get up there. Yeah, I might be more comfortable trying that on the uh, on the trend side than going against it, rather than going against it. Okay, so there was just a whole lot of selling going on here at 4100. How can I tell? Well, that's where the market started ranging back and forth, back and forth. And now it looks as though we may have recommitted to a downtrend. So I need to change my order. Problem with this trade is I may have to risk it up here to the macro. And maybe we'll see if this doesn't run out a little bit. So I've deleted my... Uh, profit taking order and oh come on you guys I should be rolling my stop this is going to work itself into a four arrow consolidation or maybe a macro pullback. So here we go now with the macro pullback. So Mo was asking, well, when the bar changes color, can we look at buying it? Well, let's, let's follow that. So we would be long now because the micro line has changed color. Okay, 
so here's a macro pullback signal now we're looking for the market to recover the downtrend and if you were long you could be sweating a little bit now so I'm gonna manually pull my trade down to here no come on sellers where'd you go Ugh. well some of that choppiness is still in the market and I may have been a little bit too quick with my stop there should have maybe left it up here a little bit longer we'll see whether or not I get another chance to adjust that you see the when the market starts to drift you can always anticipate it's going to come into the macro line and give you some sort of reaction now sometimes it's going to break a little bit higher than the macro line that's how we end up getting our green bar cells Yeah, look at that. And there they go. Yeah, darn it. Just a little bit too too quick with my stop. I should have allowed it just a little bit more time. See, when you're using your um, risk percent model, you don't need to hurry with your stops because this is an amount I can afford to lose. It may or may not be an amount you can afford to lose, but it's an amount I can afford to lose, so I don't need to worry so much, okay? If the trade does not work out, Yes, it's no fun. But it's not going to ruin me. So, therefore, you should be a little bit more conservative with your stops or with adjusting your stops. Okay, it's looking like the seller's still in control. And now here on the Hawk, we have a four arrow consolidation. It's a bit of a sloppy four arrow consolidation. Normally we like to see it resemble a bear flag. This is a rather awkward one because it's pointing down. This is a better one. Actually, this one's textbook. One, two, three, four. Four arrows, nice little bear flag type pattern and the great follow through. This one is kind of sloping the wrong way, isn't it? It's more more of a bull flag type thing even though it, there are cell arrows and here on the Falcon we're getting our trend line touch signal had a late filter entry signal right there At the same time we were watching the Hawk trade so that one had some very nice follow-through to it I would not necessarily take this one right on the hash mark. I would definitely take it below the lows. And I wouldn't be anxious. You're getting another signal here, so you can wait for that one too. Why don't we do that? So we're going to wait for that next signal. And I can tell you that it should print right there. So there's... From my logic counter, I can tell you the bottom of the bar will be 40, 71 half. So I want my entry below there. We're getting one warning dot. It is possible that the Falcon can give you two warning dots before producing a signal. See, two warning dots, then the signal. So I'm being a little presumptive here that I'm going to get the hash mark printing as this bar closes.
All right, there's the hash mark. This is getting kind of sticky, folks. If you're looking for a signal to follow me on, you know, this may not be the best one. Crude oil is um, a little bit stronger than uh, the NASDAQ this morning. Take a look. Here's crude on the Falcon. And they tailed off a little bit. Found some support near our support line. Traded up here. Took a bounce off of the median line. And now they're just kind of in limbo also. Working on a possible trend change in crude oil. All right, I'm going to scrub this order because we've started to introduce some green bars. And that makes me think we might see a soft edge buy here on the Raptor. So we've kind of retested our lows here. We'll see if the Raptor comes in with a buy signal. And what I would be looking for is I would be looking for the Raptor to violate this high. Why? Well, because once it breaches that high, we have a pretty good idea there's going to be two moves in the direction of the breakout. So there's move number one. There would be move number two. That's kind of the plan. All right, there's the signal. There's the breach. I'm just going to buy in with a buy market or a, a market order. I've got to stop. I've got my break even and my profit target on the same price here today. And I'm going to see if I can get up there. Let's see, had I. Was I able to take it on the hash mark, I would have got my fill or my profit target a little earlier. All right, there we go. Come on. Don't look back. Let's go. So here's that reaction that I was telling you about. All right, so let's look for the second leg higher now. We need two legs to stand on. All right, while we're waiting for that, I'm going to shoot a trend line. That's going to look something like this, I think. Okay, so the, the point I want to make to you here is when you see a market, uh, a lot of times I'll draw like a channel on my trend line. When you see a market breach, the trend line either higher or lower you would think that's a sign of weakness that the bears are in control but really it's not it's a sign that the buyers might be coming back okay so here's leg number one we're on the lookout for leg number two there it is and there's the signal so we'll buy in and now we're looking for them to take out this high. Let's go, buyers. All right, so we're currently long, and I'll go with my parabolics and get that trade break to break even. There we go. And hopefully we'll see a little bit more follow-through this time. If, hopefully they won't reach too far back. We do have a little bit of room here. Maybe see it go back to 4,100. That would be a, a nice little move. So look at the tug of war that's going on right here. 
the sellers tried to force it down. The buyers tried to take it back. So I would think the buyers, we're going to see a little bit of a rally here. Come on, don't stop. Get going. Sometimes you got to give it a little push with your mouse. There you go. See, that should help. Give it a little nudge up. There. All right. There you go. If everybody's doing this, then the market will go higher. Where's Ray Burke when I need him? Get him in here with his push. Oh, my gosh. He used to crack me up when he did that. So a little bit of a reaction here to the hard edge now. Um, Working on a possible cloud crossover, I would really like to see them continue to rally from here and not reach too far back. I'd hate to think that this is all that they could muster on the second move higher. But we do have a pretty good downtrend going on today, don't we? Maybe that is all they can muster today. Let's go. Come on. Get up there. All right. Well, it was worth a try. We kind of see that would be a higher probability trade. We got a few more ducks in the row. We can take a signal like that with a great deal of confidence. Um, so what? So we had to wait an hour to get a signal like that. You know, if you go in and even if you went in all in, all out, and you took two contracts, that's uh, 200 bucks. And, you know, of course, if you can take four contracts or six contracts, whatever the case may be, the, the earnings go up at the same time. Um, <laughs> yeah, Mo says we're in posit positive territory now, uh, meaning back here, according to the Ichimoku cloud. Um, I know it's a common misconception, Mo, but it's not an Ichimoku cloud. <laughs> I wish we could have thought of a different word for it or a different way to display it. Um, this is the band from the, the eagle, of course. I, everybody thinks that it's an Ichimoku cloud, but it's not really. Um, Mo also asked, Eric, are the other markets as choppy as the NQ? Yes, they will be. Uh, hold on here one second. I'll bring over uh, a Dow chart. So here's the Dow on the Raptor. Well, actually, the Dow, it, it's choppy too, but it doesn't seem as volatile as the NASDAQ is. So here was the open. We had a little progression lower. A nice little hard edge bounce signal here off of this pullback. And then you hit the sideways trading range. And a nice little move lower. So the NASDAQ not as pronounced a move higher, or pardon me, the mini Dow, not as pronounced move higher as the NASDAQ, but they're all going to look more or less the same today. Uh, Mo asks, what about the Russell? Hold on here a sec. Now, I don't have the Russell on my data, but I can show you the mid cap, which is the Russell's twin.
the mid cap and the Russell, they pretty much go hand in hand. So here's the mid cap. And here's the open. So same thing. We saw the, a move lower, a little bit of a retracement. Here it came out with a nice hard edge bounce, move lower into the sideways chop. Uh, actually, here on the mid cap, we did get a clue uh, better than on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ was fairly even through this zone, but here on the mid cap, you can see that we're producing lower highs and we're starting to produce lower lows. That is a definite sign that the sellers are in control and we might see the market continue lower, which is in fact what it did. And here too on the mid cap, not quite as volatile to the upside as the NASDAQ was. The Russell will look exactly like this. Um, people ask me, why don't you trade the Russell? Well, I will once they move it over to the uh, CME. And I think that should be soon. But honestly, they do all move the same direction. And I'm, if you haven't figured it out already, I'm not really one for more. You know, I don't think that following more markets makes you more profitable. I don't think having more signals makes you more profitable. I do think having more money makes you more profitable. You know, if you have a larger trading account, it's certainly easier to be a profitable trader than if you're trading on a shoestring. It's not to say it can't be done. It's just that you need to be much more selective with your trades as a small, small trader. Yeah, Mo asks, um, do you find that the NQ moves better for you because you pretty much follow it? Uh, I used to ignore the NQ uh, until in the trading room one morning, and this is years ago now, there was a little old lady in Florida. <laughs> and uh, she was trading the NASDAQ lights out. Every day she'd be saying, oh, Eric, you know, I made another $600 in the NASDAQ. Oh, I made $1,000 in the NASDAQ today. And she was trading the DTS system. And uh, I had stopped following the NASDAQ because it had, well, I don't want to say gotten corrupt, but it, it just didn't have the follow through to it like it used to. And I thought to myself, I'd better take a second look at the NASDAQ. And sure enough, uh, the NASDAQ, I, I think this was about the same time that Apple uh, was starting to become a rejuvenated uh, company. Um, and the NASDAQ was just making great moves. There's a lot of volatility in the NASDAQ, as you've noticed, or can be a lot of volatility in the NASDAQ. And it... Um, it made decent moves through the day, and it was only $5 a tick. So it enabled me to take multiple contracts. Uh, it gave me my profit objectives, usually without you know having to wait for it very long. And we're getting a cloud crossover signal here on the Raptor now, so we're looking that maybe the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe the buyers are still in control. And it just turned out to be a really good market, and I've kind of adopted it as my own. Um, you know, people are asking me about the E-mini and stuff. The E-mini is great. The E-mini will not move opposite the NASDAQ. If the NASDAQ and the Dow are going higher, the E-mini will go higher. But the E-mini is 1250 a tick. So there's times that I can take two or three uh, NASDAQ positions for only one e-mini position. So that gives me a lot more flexibility in my trade management for one. And what a lot of people don't recognize is that the e-mini and the NASDAQ 
and the mini Dow for that matter, tend to make the same dollar equivalent move. So what I mean by that is if the E-mini makes a $200 move, the NASDAQ will likely make a $200 move. It's not like if the NASDAQ makes a 40 tick move, the E-mini makes a 40 tick move. In which case, trading for $12.50 a tick means that you're going to be two and a half times more profitable, right? No, it tends to work out that they move more or less. You know, there's obviously, uh, this isn't carved in stone, but more or less, the E-mini and the uh, NASDAQ and the Dow tend to move dollar for dollar, and the Russell also. Yeah, like, uh, like Mo says, the E-mini and the YM are virtually the same. Uh, Jim grabbed a quick little short on the YM, short at 39 out of 27, two contracts. Well done. Nothing wrong with that. It is that kind of day after all. Yeah, I get people asking me about the uh, the NQ all the time for that matter. Okay, what we're just horsing around here now because I'm going to entertain what Tony was mentioning. Um buying on a limit so I've shot a trend line here the markets come down we're gonna see now whether we're gonna get a reaction off this trend line and what I need to do is I need to get some stops in play so there's gonna be our stop we're gonna allow a couple of ticks as our stop and you see there's the problem with going counter trend that's why I don't try the limit move very often it's not to say it can't work but it sure works great in hindsight I find it much harder to do real time um, yeah Jim makes a good point here too he says you know you can watch oil when oil moves the stock market tends to move as again this is a very loose rule of thumb like right now oil here's oil on uh, the Falcon oils moving higher and what's the stock market doing it's moving lower so there is a loose relationship between the two but you know you don't have to follow it tick for tick I used to do a similar thing with the 30-year bond where there's actually an inverse relationship if bonds are going up the stock markets going down if the stock markets going down and the bonds are not going up then I would have a pretty good idea that the move would not hold Tony had a little mishap here yesterday. He said uh, he closed out his Ninja Trader and uh, he had an open position still. How do you avoid that? I get in the habit of hitting the flatten everything button at the end of the day, Tony, before I close my charts exactly for that reason. And normally your Ninja Trader warns you that you have an open position still. But that's the only surefire way. Get in the habit. When you shut everything down, before you disconnect anything, the very first thing you do when you're done trading is go hit your flatten everything button. Or, at the very least, peruse your orders. You'll see if there's still an order pending. Or if there's an order working. Yeah, I know. Expensive lesson. But those are the ones that tend to stick with you. <laughs> uh, 
I know uh, my lessons that I learned the hard way, <laughs> I tend not to repeat. Um, Marlene says she got a message to reload Ninja before February 27. I'm, I take it that's the one from uh, the Ninja Trader software company. Yeah, the reason is, and I guess they're doing this because of me. You can blame me for this. Um, my, uh, my charts were not loading. Now, remember, I think it was last week, last Friday, I couldn't host the room because my charts weren't working. Uh, what happened was I was running an early version of Ninja 7, and some changes that they had made in the meantime all of a sudden caught up with me, and my charts failed. My charts wouldn't work anymore. And that was the only reason it wasn't working. It wasn't a software glitch or anything on their part. It was just that my version was too old so I think they've sent out a universal message to everybody saying if you haven't updated your ninja in a while you might want to do it Ooh. Yeah, Tony, Tony says the uh, the problem, he thinks, was with AMP, the broker, where he says it shows that he closed all your positions but one. Yeah, if, you know, the brokers are not beyond making mistakes. I had a trading friend who religiously recorded his entries and he would double check them against his statements and his broker was a friend of his but he still didn't trust him <laughs> and occasionally uh, he would record a different fill than what the brokerage gave him because there is such a thing in the trading world known as order swapping um, if you're the paranoid type which my friend certainly was you would always suspect that the broker might swap out your order in favor for a better client or something you know somebody gets the better order you get the worse order you get the worse fill now it's something that's much more common in the stock market um, certainly in penny stocks and stuff like that the point is you're responsible for your own money, so make sure you do your own bookkeeping. Don't trust your broker to do your work for you, because then you won't have um, a leg to stand on. It is a business, folks. There are less expensive and less stressful hobbies than trading. All right, so we're seeing a little bit of um, sideways action again after this recent move lower. So a nice little move lower as they, they failed to recover the uptrend. So see, in fact, this was just a very large bear flag. And the market continued lower. And now we're getting a little bit more sideways action. Are we near the lows? Yes, it looks like we're near the lows of the day. little itty bitty test of the extreme here a retest of the low there's our buy signal so this is now a soft edge buy and I'm sorry for showing you a counter trend signal I tell you to avoid them and then you see me show you one what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this low to hold we've had a retest of the lows 
It's kind of a rejection on the part of the sellers at this point to take the market lower. So if the market doesn't go lower, it's going to try to go higher. My first real obstacle appears to be right here, although I am taking some heat right there, and I guess I'd better get a stop loss order in play here. All right, so here the sellers have to show up again or I'm done. Okay, so if I get this bar finishing in my favor, I'm going to look at rolling my stops up a little bit. Uh, right now I'm looking at the lows to fend off the buyers. <laughs> yeah, like Tony says, wrestling alligators is a much less stressful hobby. <laughs> Come on, get up there. I'm giving the buyers every opportunity to get their act together. Nope. Looks like the sellers are going to push this lower still. There they go. So that was the, the attempt at a soft edge buy. The soft edge buy signal right here. I was expecting it to move to the hard edge, and it was always it's always preceded by a test of the extreme. But you can see the danger with doing a counter trend signal. Not only did it block me from taking the the double pullback, but it stopped me out for a little bit of a loss there, adding a little insult to injury. All right, you guys, I think we're going to shut down the room for today. Um, in case you haven't received the notification from Adam yet, there will be no trading room on Monday. All right, I'm not going to be available this Monday to host the trading room. So the next trading room will be on Tuesday. I'll see you guys then. Have yourselves a wonderful weekend. I am sure looking forward to mine. We'll talk to you guys on Tuesday. Bye for now.